is a book loosely based on Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale, The Nightingale, about a boy named Little John and a girl named Gail and the deep magic of forgiveness and friendship. And I have a small confession to make. When I was a little girl, I was weird, really weird. For one thing, my best friend was a tree, not a tree like this one. Mine was a Mexican sycamore. I loved that tree so much. I spent all my time outside with it, telling it my secrets, reading its stories, a lot of fairy tales, singing to it. I wanted to spend my life up in the branches of my tree. The only problem was the good climbing branches started pretty high up. So to get to them, I either had to climb to the very top of my swing set and make a little bit of a leap or climb out on my second story roof, which was 100% against all the rules. I did it anyway, pretty much every day of my childhood. By the way, if you break those kind of rules, it turns out your neighbors call your parents and you get in all sorts of trouble. It was worth it. The thing is, if I hadn't broken all those rules, if I hadn't climbed out on the roof over and over again, I never would have written this book because I never would have been able to see what I saw up there. Up there, on the roof, near my tree, I could see to one end of my street where there was this kind of shabby one-story brick house where the meanest kid in the neighborhood lived. And I would sit there looking at his house and thinking how much harder my life would be if I lived there. Those memories of the feeling of being free and being with my tree are what led me to write Nightingale's Nest. People tend to ask authors if they are their characters, and the short answer is no. But for me, for this book, the answer is closer to yes. A whole lot of who I was as a little girl is Gail. A weird little girl <laughs> who loved trees and loved books. But it's okay. I think a lot of writers probably start out as strange kids who grow up and break a whole lot of rules to get to the stories they have inside. The are alive with the sound of... Mom, what are you doing on the roof? Nothing! Okay, the truth is, I never stopped breaking rules. When I was writing Nightingale's Nest, I went back to my old home, to my house, the yard, and the tree, to see if I got it right, to see if my tree was still there. Unfortunately, the house had been foreclosed on and it was all chained up and locked up with signs, no trespassing everywhere. So, of course, I trespassed. I climbed over the chain link fence right past all the signs and locks and went into the backyard. But my tree was gone. That's okay. It's not really gone. It's right here. Can't no preacher man save my so